I congratulate you, and of course myself too. We are at a chips factory, moreover at the largest facility for producing this snack in Russia. And now we're looking at how the basic ingredient, the potato, is unloaded. I mean, loads of potatoes. Potatoes from the truck are unloaded in a special way. The truck is driven to a special platform and raised to the angle of 30 degrees. This allows the potatoes to gradually roll out of the cargo bed. It takes about half an hour to unload such a 20-ton truck. Potatoes are transported from all over Russia. On average, we have three potato lines. Three potato lines can consume up to 800 tons of potatoes per shift. After being unloaded, the potato sets off on a long journey along the conveyors of the plant. Not every potato turns into chips. It goes through a careful selection process. Here, for example, the first stage of selection, which is size grading. The tuber should be more than 1.4 inches in diameter. Otherwise, it'll fall between the rollers and will be rejected. Look, for example, look, this tuber has passed size grading and soon it will become chips. Size is by no means the only parameter which potatoes are selected by. Only a few varieties are suitable for chips production. We only use certain varieties from Russian suppliers. We need potatoes with a higher content of starch to get that perfect crunch. So we're going back to production. After automatic rejection, the potato gets into the washing machine, a rotating drum resembling a washing machine. Together with the mud, excess starch is washed off. It remains on the water surface as gray foam. Then the potato must be peeled. This is done in central centrifuges, with each being capable of peeling 66 pounds of root crops in one minute. Next, the second sorting, this time with the participation of a human. Well, it seems to me that, that you just need my help. Of course. Tell me what I can do. We will need your help. You can throw out the green ones. Ah, that is, find a green one and throw it away. Yes. Yes, is this one? Yes, you throw it away. Well, we're throwing it away. Face control. Finally, it's time to make the potatoes look like chips. That is, to cut them into thin slices. However, this happens in a closed container and you cannot see the cutting process. Alexander, what is this? We are at the second stage of processing potatoes. This is a division of cutting potatoes into thin slices. Ah, well, that is, there's a very small little man sitting in this barrel and he's quickly cutting them, isn't he? Well, almost like this. Now I'll tell you in more detail about the technological process. Here we can see already prepared slices, which then go into the rinsing machine. Yes, and how, what's inside? How is it cut so thinly? I just can't imagine it. Let's go a little further. Yes, let's do that. Here we see a cutting machine. Potatoes through special trays come in these machines from above. Okay. And due to the angular acceleration, it moves in a circle and is cut into such thin slices. And how thin are these slices? The slices are very thin, but unfortunately, I cannot tell you the exact figure. Secret? Secret. Additives. How thick the potato slice is affects the taste and texture of the final product. Therefore, manufacturers keep this figure secret. After being cut, the potato is washed again and sent for frying. All this is a huge fryer. From the one side, washed and sliced potatoes go into it. They are submerged into vegetable oil, heated to 356 degrees Fahrenheit for three minutes. And from the other side, fragrant golden chips come out. But I remember that you cannot eat in the production facility. Therefore, alas, we're going further without tasting. The tasting will be later. As potato chips are a very simple product, they don't contain any food additives. For example, in snacks with salt, there is nothing contained except, in fact, salt, potato, and vegetable oil. 
but there are other more refined flavors. We produce a big line of flavors, starting from simple ones such as sour cream, onions, onions, green onions, cheese, bacon, and uh, also, let's say, more sophisticated ones, flavors like veal on the grill, for example, parmesan cheese, mild cheese, and so on. So, we have a line of about 20 flavors altogether. The day at the chips plant is coming to an end, but our host can't go home hungry. You cannot eat at the production facilities, but in any enterprise, you can find a room for tasting. Irina, I really want to learn how to professionally taste chips. I used to be an amateur. Now I want to learn professionally. Will you help me? Okay, I'll show you how we taste things around here. Great. We open a pack and smell it. It's just like with wine, isn't it? Okay. So we open it and... Well, almost. And now the most interesting thing. Okay. Then we okay. determine the taste of the product. We take the product. Is it necessary to bite off or can you do it all at once? Try it. It's better to bite. Then I'll explain why. Yeah. How is it? Have some water. Okay, tastes like salty chips. Exactly. And now, the last stage of our tasting, that's when we are going to taste the product and bite a piece off, to hear the crunch that our customers like so much. And that's how we determine the texture of our product. Hmm, mm, it's clear. And then, are there any decibel criteria, for example, that it should be from this and to that? Well, here is what's important. The strength with which we bite the product and the sound that we hear. The effort you apply in biting should be minimal, and you'll hear that special crunch, even next door.